Welcome back. Before we went on our mandatory break, we were talking about the caretaker government. Uh, this is the demand of the day. We want, we won't have elections without a caretaker government. Says one party, the other party says the country is organizing the 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 election commission is organizing elections in cities, and they are being run smoothly. So, and the results have made the other party very happy. So why bother? In our studio, we have a lady, very well known, advocate Sufia, uh, uh, Sultana Kamal. Sufia Kamal was her mother. Uh, uh, she was part of a caretaker government in, in earlier days, before this government, incumbent government, came to power. And I would like to ask her about uh, what is the situation now? The elections in, in Russia, in, in Kulna, in, in Silet, in Barishal, and Ghazipur, are they giving a message that people are asking for a caretaker government or what? Well, I am not entirely sure whether this is uh, an indication that the people are asking specifically for caretaker government. People are taking part in elections which are being organized by the incumbent government anyway. Right. So they have not said that we are not going to vote if the mm -hmm. government is not uh, handing over power to a caretaker government. But then that was not, not expected for local government True. elections True. anyway. But at least the incumbent government should be careful now in assessing that what is making their candidates fail like this. Because the difference of the votes are quite you know, wide. It's, mm, it's, yes, it's, it's about uh, over 100,000 in, in yeah. Ghazipur. Uh, and as I hear from others, the local people, that many of the uh, 14 party alliance candidates were quite popular, mm -hmm. more popular probably than the 18 party candidate. But then why are they failing like that? So the government sh uh, should now pay more attention to the messages that the people want to mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. send to them. But regarding the process of election or the system of election, I personally always maintain that if the election commission is allowed to work independently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without any interference by the outgoing government, because mm -hmm. uh, I say outgoing government because it is expected yep. that when the election will come, this government will resign. Okay, then. The, uh, the election gov uh, commission should be able to hold a free, fair election. Uh, caretaker government is not all that uh, necessity here. Particularly, I think in this way because of my experience in the caretaker government, because I have seen that how the caretaker government can be manipulated yes. to reflect the wish of the outgoing be government. Before we forget, can you shortly tell us, uh, uh, in very briefly, what were the circumstances you and three colleagues of yours had to leave? Well, we were practically not allowed to act as a government at that time because uh, I can give you one example that we had meetings every day, morning, evening, but in 41 days we had only two or three formal meetings where the minutes were recorded. Mm -hmm. Okay, And the other meetings were just discussions, consultations, talking and we were no not records. allowed to take any decision whatsoever. So if you can't take a decision, if you cannot really make a progress in your governance, then you really feel that you are not being able to who, act. Who, who would take the decision? Well, uh, at that time we had a very peculiar circumstance because we had the president and the chief advisor. But the same person. Uh, same person. And the person was uh, quite openly and quite, uh, I would say, uh, nakedly following the dictates by the outgoing government or fr uh, from the uh, party leaders. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why, uh, he, uh, just because the chief advisor was not uh, asserting his own views against the dictates of the outgoing government and allowing us to take a collective decision mm -hmm. as the mm -hmm. caretaker government, we just didn't want to really continue there and uh, particularly finally when we saw that he was taking all the preparations to call in the army, I personally felt that that is a signal that the civil government has failed and why should we 
uh, why should I be in a government which basically has been told by the chief advisor that you have not been able to do your in, in, in looks, not in yeah. <laughs> nature. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> we have two huge political parties. Uh, uh, don't you think that uh, in, a, in a country of Sholokuti, Jonogon, People's Republic, we need some more parties and we need some more faces. And possibly, I do not know how, but I feel like that this Shabag is kind of an answer or probably a demand for a change in the political fascia of the country. I think you are very right in asking this question that do not we need more parties to really take uh, uh, forward all the political issues that need to be resolved in this country. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when it becomes a matter of only two parties or uh, the two parties are given all the power to really deal with all the problems of 16 uh, or 160 million people right. or 170 million people, it is not possible, humanly possible or politically even possible for these parties to do that. Moreover, it becomes a monopoly of these parties. Okay? And the way these parties are treating any other group who really want to really uh, come and contribute in this discourse or the collective decision making process which is a, a, I would say a very serious and a very basic condition of democracy. Uh, I, I think everything becomes uh, uh, you know what should I say captive in the hands of these two parties. Everybody you becomes a cap captive in the hands these, of these uh, two, two these parties. Do you think these two political parties or other, other parties, I mean I'm not just two because there are 14 or 18 and all the, all the alliances, alliances, all yes. the affiliates, uh, they, 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 they do practice democracy within their own uh, Well, uh, as far as we can see, as far as we can assess their uh, internal affairs, we can very, uh, you know, uh, clearly say that these two parties or these alliances, they also do not practice democracy within their own party or within the alliances. We always see that any, uh, any, uh, any of these two parties basically look up to their one particular leader to give all the decisions. One particular them. leader, one particular family. Uh, one particular leader, one particular family maybe, yes. Yeah. And, and, and I was talking to uh, Mark Tully. Uh, and uh, he had uh, written, uh, he has written several books and uh, I think he has written about uh, uh, one of his books ends with this quotation that Congress is a very powerful party. It is like a bunion tree, see, bodgach, see, yeah. nothing grows under the bunion tree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, uh, uh, nothing grows under the bunion tree, uh, but then uh, there, there has to be spaces made for other trees to grow, so but then up, yes. these banyan trees do not allow the spaces <laughs> even for the others to grow. Uh, <coughs> how do you see this uh, Chabag Morcha? At one time, when we were kids, Chabag used to be a hotel. <laughs> then it became a hospital, and now it's uh, treating the political disease of the country. <laughs> it is, yeah. Now I think the rise of the Chabag group gave us again uh, or g gave us an opportunity to relieve the spirit of the liberation war of 1971 mm. because people as you actually mentioned in the very beginning of our program that why is it that people are not uh, aware of what has happened mm -hmm. in 1971 mm. and why is this confusion in the minds of the yeah, new people. generation about what whatever has happened between 1952 and 1971 and also in post 71 uh, for, uh, in the first few years. So actually this Shabak group reacting or responding to a particular judgment by the ICT mm -hmm. brought back the spirit of the liberation war to the nation. I will very gratefully recognize that, acknowledge that. Maybe we have some differences in the way they did it, some differences uh, in probably the slogans they chose to really mm -hmm. shout, mm -hmm. that is a different thing. Mm -hmm. But then this young group definitely made people realize that what was the basic aspirations 
of the people of Bangladesh when we fought the liberation war in 1971. Yeah, but unfortunately a lot of uh, established politicians, uh, left or right, they also went there and to wanted to jump on the bandwagon. That is the whole problem. What happens in our country and probably it again goes back to your earlier question that when many other political forces who feel that they are quite established in the country, particularly the two big parties, when they feel either they want to really appropriate the movements, mm -hmm. when they cannot do that, they start feeling threatened by them. Mm -hmm. So either way, they become an enemy or they make them an enemy of all these parties. So that is what has happened in Bangladesh because all these uh, you know, irrelevant uh, debates about who's a um, atheist and who's not an atheist mm -hmm. and who, who's a, a true Muslim and who's not a true Muslim or the basic uh, you know, argument of uh, atheist or non-atheist into this Shabag discourse. I, I think this is totally uncalled for and irrelevant. Well, I think this the, the basic point is that of Iman. This is not how many times one prays. It is how, what he believes in, one thing. And if, 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 uh, if somebody is a Muslim, true Muslim, he will not insult the principles of Islam, the feelings of Islam. He will not try to distort. And that was, I think, that was uh, the problem. Because I think a true Muslim as I have seen in my own family, as I have learned through my life, that a true Muslim will not do, to do that to any person, whether that person is a Muslim or not Muslim. True, true, true. Will not harm anybody. Ah, it's, uh, I mean, uh, <coughs> the basic uh, principle of a good religion, which Islam is, should be that uh, they, they are not any way to really harm anyone. No, no, it's, it's, it's not the idea. It's sometimes it happens that people who, in, in their eagerness to please somebody or to show that I am one, so that up, is just they do yeah, that. See. Misuse of the religious sentiment of the people or abusing the religious sentiment of the right. people. And that uh, cannot be permitted uh, in well a we, democracy. We, uh, today I was watching uh, uh, television and news that now Shabag is making another name. It's, uh, the traffic is all chock a block there because the students have blocked this. Right. Because but anyway, we'll come to that later or if we get time at all in another episode with you. But I just want to ask you, what is the future of democracy in Bangladesh? I think uh, if we have faith in our people, I would say that the future of democracy in Bangladesh should be very bright. It's only a group of people at the top or vested interest groups in politics in business, in many other, you know, sectors of the society, who really jeopardize the democratic mm -hmm. process in Bangladesh. Well, who is going to take them to task? Well, I think the people will do that. Mm -hmm. They they can do it through elections. They can do it after election. And I mean, we have seen in our own experience that whenever all these people uh, or the leaders of the society failed to really deliver what was expected of them, the people actually made them do it at some point of time. But then, yes, uh, uh, quite often, probably uh, for a huge, uh, you know, cost or, uh, you know, a lot of losses. But then again, people <coughs> have done that. Uh, I, I, I mean, we have seen that in our history that people do make the leaders deliver so what they so want. So do we need people. another revolution? Well, Bangladesh has always <laughs> gone through many revolutions, probably not the way it's defined everywhere, but right. then we had our own so revolution. So we have to get rid of, of, uh, get rid of political, uh, corrupt politicians, uh, corrupt political well, practices? I, I, uh, well, yes, uh, corrupt practices, corruption in politics, corruption in business, corruption in social uh, whatever sectors we have, in, uh, in court for that matter, in um, uh, medical services, in education. So and it's not only in politics, yes. With, when we get rid of uh, corruption and with the corruption help of TIB, irregularities <laughs> and <coughs> <laughs> we will inshallah establish true democracy in Bangladesh. On that very happy note, thank you very much for coming along. Thank you. And for being our guest. Thank you. Me. An honor and a pleasure. Thank you, VS, for being with us. <laughs>